Okay, good morning, YouTubers. Thanks for watching the uh, video or clicking on this here. I hope you watch it to the end. I'm going to do a bit of a voiceover here um, on the GoPro video that I've put together. Some of this I've time lapsed, some of it is just in regular time. Um, so, to start off with, here I'm just prepping with, uh, as you see, some, some Nason or Nissan uh, wax and grease remover. Uh, it's a freshly painted van or pickup truck rather and I didn't really have to probably wipe down with that but I, I do just as a fail safe anyways and uh, I'm just grabbing my squirt bottle now with the soap and water just dish soap and some and some water and just to wipe down any residue that is left from the wax and grease remover give that a quick wipe it was the surface was pretty clean already as it was so it didn't take a lot to prep it uh, other vehicles are different especially after they've been already out to a few car shows and have been outside and have been waxed and rewaxed and uh, so here I'm just gonna try and find center uh, I didn't have a tape measure with me so all I use is just a, I think it's an 18 inch ruler there just measure both sides full length and then I just split the difference and, and there you got center. Now from there, I'm uh, pulling out a vinyl paint mask that I hand cut. I took the pattern, traced it onto the paint mask, hand cut it, weed it, mask it. So it's going to help. Uh, oh yeah, here I'm going to get an actual rubber plastic ruler so I don't scratch the surface of that uh, that freshly painted truck. Which incidentally, that is a 65 Chevy truck that I'm working on. Really nice truck. You guys put a lot of money, a lot of time into this. This job's been going on for over a year I think from the initial uh, contact and his idea of what he wanted the scenery that he wanted painted on there and he had originally was going to have it to be a little patinaed and a little rat rotty look to it but after going to some other car shows he changed his mind and went with a high end paint job which was fine by me So uh, yeah, as you can read there, I, I wet sanded just that pictorial area. Um, that's going to help when it comes time to blending the paint because uh, I do everything with a brush. It's not airbrushed. And I'm working with the one shots and I blend the colors, and which really goes well with that style of a, of a pictorial. It's supposed to be an old country scene. Excuse me. So I'm going to try and, uh, this is a 30 minute long video, so I'm going to try to ramble on here for 30 minutes, but I'm sure I'm going to run out of stuff to say at certain points. So if you don't hear me, it's just because I'm waiting for <laughs> something to happen here that's worth talking about. Here's the Sorol paper that I use uh, a lot uh, for transferring patterns. Uh, I've had that roll of Sorol there for four or five years and it's just starting to show signs of needing replacement. Uh, I, and I, like I said, I use it a lot for a lot of projects that I work on. It's great stuff to have in your kit and at your, uh, at your disposal. that pattern originally I I drew that about 10% larger than what you're seeing it at now and it was starting to get the feeling it was going to be too large so I pinned it up on my wall took a picture of it transferred it into the computer reduced it in size and then just printed it out uh, on my uh, my desktop printer taped all the individual pieces together so that's why it looks the way it does. Now I'm 
just roughing in some of the areas there. Geez, I wish I could go that fast in real time because, uh, man, you could really make some money then. fan going in the background I hope there I turn that off I hope that's not uh, coming through all right so just masking off a couple other areas yes I'm uh, using the knife there but I'm barely cutting through the the tape there you certainly don't want to cut into the uh, the surface of the uh, the paint there um, Pulling out all my brushes, I probably brought about 30 different brushes with me. I never know which one I'm going to use. And I forgot something in my kits all the way over there because I was too stupid to drag it over right beside me. Yep, just leave it right back over there. You don't need to bring it over with you next to you, that's for sure. Jesus. I did clue in by day two to maybe do that. Bring 30 brushes, use three. And some of those I've got, got oil in the brushes there. Like I oil up my lettering quills and pinstriping brushes and that. So I'm just uh, cleaning out some of the oil in them now. Oh, this is exciting. All right, get on with it. You don't need those. You're not going to use them. No, but you think you're going to use them, so... If I recall, I never did use those ones. I don't know why I took them out. Here's my uh, my trade industry secret there. Been using that since the days uh, in the billboard shop doing pictorials. get painting would you actually this is gonna uh, I'm gonna speed this will be sped up uh, shortly here so just hold on and uh, wait we'll get flying through this shortly for 
me to start painting. I'll just mention that there's going to be four videos for this whole uh, project. It took four days, not full days, you know, I'd work six hours one day and eight hours the next. And I think the last day that uh, I only spent another four hours on the project to finish it up. Um, all in all, I think I had 28 hours of painting time. Cutting down the Dixie Cups, which I do a lot of. I don't need them that tall. It's not a real pain in the ass, but I just found it a little more convenient after I cut them down once. I was like, I liked it. Uh, I liked them having them shorter like that because you don't put, use much paint, so it's not like you're filling up the whole thing. There's my GoPro clicking because it's slowly falling out of the holder that I've got there. I did delete that part, but it comes crashing down on the floor. Luckily, it was in the Pelican case, so didn't get any damage. I pour uh, when I'm pouring into the cups like that I go from lightest to darkest starting with white and I always just keep them in order like that um, just something I've always done but it just seems to make sense then when you're blending colors or on, on your palette you kind of keep them all in the same areas where the cups are and there again I'm cutting through but I'm barely cutting through that tape I have to go over it a couple of times because I don't want to cut into that uh, painted surface so here I think I might be actually ready nope not gonna paint yet eh come on I'm usually reluctant to just get started because I'm in my head thinking about the process not that I haven't thought about it for a couple of days already anyways but as I'm just sitting there in front and I'm doing all this other little fiddly stuff I'm, I'm actually thinking about how I'm going to approach this It's clean. Paint. Jesus Christ. biggest problem is that once I get done this side then I got to go to the other side and do the same thing all over again nope still not gonna paint yeah just paint the darn thing already come on are you sweating really you haven't done anything all right there we go finally This part I should have sped up as well. The next couple of frames are all sped up, but this one's gonna be in real time for the next couple of minutes, I think that's all.
So there I just start to add a little bit more yellow, a little bit more orange into the paint, starting to add a little, just get that fade started from the, uh, from the center there where the sun is gonna be, the setting sun. And at first I just kind of spot in the colors and then I come back with the uh, with that blender that uh, my, my little mixture there that I showed earlier and that uh, that helps to blend the paints together works good with with using oils So there I'm just blending them in a little bit more. All right, well, nothing really. I should play some music in here, probably. Maybe I'll do that. I'll, uh, I'll stop the voiceover right now and uh, just throw in some tunes for a bit, see how that goes. So I shall catch up with you all in a bit.
Okay, so that certainly ate up some time and that uh, kept me from having to ramble on pointlessly. Uh, so yeah, so we got the sky filled in there, turned out pretty good, threw in some of the uh, the mountains there, the hills and whatnot. Uh, they're they're kind of faded in. They're, they're not a crisp line. Uh, you wouldn't ha you can't see that up close. So until you get up close, rather. Uh, now I have no idea what I'm doing right there. Um, what are you doing? Getting more paint. Uh, getting ready to paint the water. That's what I'm doing. So getting out some greens, some teal, some blues. Start towards the uh, the farthest distance and work my way forward. So I've already painted the other side. I've done this much as well. That you, whatever you see here is what I've done on the other side as well. Which I think I make note of that. There's some wording on the video too. So let me know uh, if you guys, uh, you know, shoot me some comments as to what I can do to, to make a better video. Because really this is something I'm new at and I'm just experimenting. And I know I've watched other videos that I like, other people do videos and uh, I'm just making this up as I go along. So here I'm just looking at some reference pictures there that I've uh, chosen. Chosen for various reasons. Either one picture had a nice sunset, another one had a nice piece of water, you know, or reflection. a common comment will be to avoid having any silent portions here. So in a bit, once I get this water going here, I'll painting the water, I'll go through that a little bit, but then I'm going to throw some more tunes in and finish off right to the end, probably with some music. So here I'm just cutting in. So in the distance, the farthest away from you, the farther away from you, you're going to want to have a, a, a dark, dull value. You're not going to want, it, it wouldn't be bright and it wouldn't have much detail. It's not till you get to the foreground where you start to see detail and you would start to see better, more vibrant colors, brighter colors and that. And that just creates depth. you wouldn't see any any waves or any action or any detail that was uh, you know half a mile away from you it's not till it's right in front of you where you're gonna see anything like that dock that's right there so I'm just masking that off which I probably didn't really have to I could have just cut around it um, but I like to mask stuff off especially when you if, if I'm gonna go in and paint then you know if I was gonna paint the dock it turns out the dock was one of the last things that I painted so that was a couple days down the road but if it was something you were gonna be painting right away then it's nice that you don't have you know any other colors that are bleeding into that area overlapping into it so then you just end up having to deal with blending those colors into the color of the uh, you know in this case the wood the, the dock 
so it's just a good way to avoid having to deal with that but I didn't have to deal with that today anyways because I called her quits before I got to that point yeah so this is almost done about another three minutes left so I'm just gonna uh, I'm just gonna grab some tunes and uh, fill in the last little bit here with uh, some music so uh, thanks for watching this far and uh, I hope you check out the next uh, there will be three more videos coming up and we will catch you later again uh, I appreciate any comments any thoughts and uh, anything to improve what it is that I'm doing here over and out catch you soon here we go